go. Good morning. I'm David Ammons, Chair of the Public Disclosure Commission, and I will be presiding officer for today's hearing. Today is February 28th, 2020. The time is 9.32 a.m. This hearing is being conducted under the authority of RCW 3405, the Administrative Procedure Act, and RCW 4217A, the Campaign Disclosure and Contribution Act. The hearing is being held at PDC offices in Olympia and is being audio recorded. Today I will hear 15 matters in brief enforcement hearings. PDC staff have provided uh, a written record for each case. Each respondent has a an opportunity to appear in person by phone or may in writing waive their right to appear. So at this point I would like uh, PD staff to introduce yourself for the record. Fox Blackhorn Delft, Compliance Coordinator. Tabitha Blacksmith, Compliance Coordinator. Tabitha. Tabitha Townsend, Compliance Coordinator. Thank you. Um, all three of you are presenting testimony today, so I would uh, like to swear you in at this point, if you would raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I, do. I so swear. Thank you. At this point, I would like the staff to give a brief overview of the lobbyist reporting requirements. Absolutely. Box. Thank you. Um, so the first group of cases that we will hear today involve lobbyists who have failed to file required monthly lobbying expense reports, also known as L2 reports, as required by RCW 4217A615, due by the 15th of each calendar month, certifying lobby activity in the prior calendar month. The lobbyists who will come before you today failed to file one or more monthly L2 reports during calendar year 2019. The L2 report discloses the name of each employer who the lobbyist has lobbied for during the month, along with the subject matter in which they are lobbying, the issuer bill number, and the persons, legislative committees, or state agencies considering the matter, along with a percentage breakdown of the lobbyist time spent lobbying the legislature and time spent lobbying state agencies. The L2 report also includes compensation received from their employers, personal expenses made by the lobbyist in connection with lobbying activity, contributions made by the lobbyist or transmitted on behalf of the lobbyist client, political committees, or other contributors, expenditures for entertainment, travel, advertising, and political advertising uh, separately, and other lobbying expenses including subcontracted lobbyists, expert witnesses, and payments for grassroots lobbying campaigns. Um, and so we did gather some uh, statistics about how many lobbyists uh, were sent reminders and how many were late. Um, we uncovered a few extra. Um, so these compliance rates that I'm going to give you today are a little higher than, um, than what they should be. I don't have the updated numbers for you today. Um, but as of yesterday, um, the, uh, the reminders that we sent out were sent um, before the deadline um, for the monthly reports. Um, and on average, um, the percent of people who had filed before we sent reminders ranged from 29% um, to upwards to 46%. Uh, to um, however, by the time the deadline came around, we were hovering around between 70 and 80% most months, with the exception of January 2019, where our compliance rate at the due date was only 68%. Uh, for the entire year, um, we were at a 77% compliance rate. Um, there were um, 9,286 L2 reports, which were required for all of 2019, um, and um, 2,123 of those were filed late in calendar year 2019. Say that again. 2,123 out of 9,286, which is 77% compliance rate for the year. On January 15th, 
PDC staff uh, 2020, PDC staff sent a warning letter by U.S. mail to 149 lobbyists who had filed, failed to file a cumulative 299 uh, L2 reports, um, which was again at a 77% um, compliance rate. Um, which that doesn't appear to be correct. That should be a 97% compliance rate. Um, informing them of their past due reports and then providing a deadline of February 12th, 2020 to file their missing report to avoid enforcement or fines. On February 14th, 2020, PDC staff sent 19 hearing notices by U.S. mail and email concerning cumulative 66 reports, which is a 99.3% compliance rate, offering them an opportunity to sign a statement of understanding or SOU and pay a $100 penalty to avoid today's hearing due by February 24th, 2020. As of tw February 24th, 2020, only 16 L2 reports were outstanding, which is a 99.84% compliance rate. Um, we just had an additional L2 report come in this morning, so now we're down to five lobbyist case that will come before you today. Um, of those, four have fa failed to file their L2 reports. Um, which would bring us down to 15 L2 reports remaining, which is roughly a 0.17 non-compliance rate as of the date of the hearing. Thank you very much. Um, do we, uh, how often do we get bounce backs on emails and uh, not deliverable U.S. postal when we send out notices of various kinds? So the with the lobbyist system, lobbyists themselves can uh, sign up for their employer. So what we've discovered through this process is that a lot of the information that we had for employers particularly was actually information for the lobbyist. Um, and sometimes the lobbyist would put their work emails down, but then they leave. Um, so we did actually encounter that a bit um, because of the connection between lobbyist employers and lobbyists when we sent these um, these notices out they frequently went to someone in the firm who still worked there or to an employer and were passed along um, so we're it's something that we're we're definitely working on we did get a lot of updated contact information um, throughout this process very good. I, I know that we d are diligent with this, and I just want to make sure that we're connecting with real people and, and that um, people don't have that as a future defense against compliance. I didn't get it or whatever. And, and so if we have um, essentially proof that there was no back, bounce back or undeliverable for U.S. mail. How long will we continue doing U.S. mail, it's, which is now basically a backup? Um, so it's, it's been pretty successful, particularly in the context of group enforcement. Um, so we also, with lobbyists and lobbyist employers, um, called. We called each lobbyist um, once. We called lobbyist employers twice. Um, we called us the second call was a subgroup of employers who had gone into the system and saved a report but not submitted it. So they got two calls, um, but we called the entire community um, after hearing notices trying to get them to um, to file, um, particularly when it was saved but not submitted because we would take that um, as a good faith effort to file, uh, provided that we could get it before the hearing. Um, as far as U.S. mail, it is um, it's incredibly useful in the context of group enforcement because our contact information is frequently incorrect. Um, and that's information that they provide to us and they are required to keep it updated within 10 days of any material change. But realistically, that doesn't happen. And so it's really helpful to be able to send it multiple places. And that's how we frequently get our notices forwarded on. Um, if we get notice that the U.S. mail and the email have bounced, then we take that a case off of the hearing list, try and find new addresses, and we'll address it in like a round two, um, which should hopefully be pretty small. Very good. I appreciate the diligence there, and I, I didn't was unaware of the, the the actual telephone calls, which is going the third mile, <laughs> and so I appreciate that. Yes, Pat. One thing for the record, it's actually one week instead of 10 days that they have to update by the law. Very good. And are we in communication with the lobbyist organization? I think it's, it used to be called the Third House. I don't know what it is now. 
the organization of lobbyists on the Hill? Um, that may be something that goes through the Outreach and Communications Division, okay. but Compliance is not. Very good. I think they were for the attestation process. Mm -hmm. It just seems like another play, another sort of reminder of people, because I, I know that they have lots on their minds during session, particularly, and. Um, Sadly, the human condition is we need lots of reminders, and I appreciate that we are definitely doing that. Um, at this point, uh, the process we'll use is for staff to explain uh, the PDC case and provide any additional information regarding compliance history. Uh, I'll ask the staff to state whether the respondent is appearing in, uh, well, I, I know no one is appearing in person, but we do have a telephone. Uh, the first case up will involve um, a person who uh, wants to be heard on the phone, and then the the next case after that will be um, a, a case in which we have received um, additional testimony, uh, written uh, communication with us. So um, the first the first matter up then will be. PDC case number um, 65098, Alma Gottlieb McHale. And if, are you handling that one? Thank you. I am. Um, so Alma would like to appear um, via phone. She um, has submitted in writing a brief statement. Have you had a chance to review that? Okay, perfect. And so I will get her on the phone unless you wanted some information before we do that. No, I think that's fine. Okay. I think with this phone you do not have to dial nine. I don't, okay. This is Tabitha from the Public Disclosure Commission. How are you this morning? I'm good. Good. We are in the hearing, and we have Dave Ammons, the chair here, and he's going to proceed with your hearing, okay? Okay. Thank you. Nice to, to have you join us on the telephone. Um, we have, uh, I have received the information uh, from staff about your case and also the letter that you wrote to us, um, email I guess it was, um, and I appreciate that, we, that has, is part of the record now. Uh, so I would, I would like uh, staff to, uh, to present the case. Okay. This is PDC case 65098. Um, against Alma Gottlieb McHale and Alma Gottlieb McHale is the lobbyist. Um, staff is alleging that Alma violated 4217A615 by failing to file timely one or more monthly lobbying expense reports. Those are the L2 reports for 2019. The L2 reports were due no later than the 15th day of each month. Disclosing lobbying activity in the previous calendar month. The L2 reports for Alma filed, um, I'm sorry, Alma filed the missing L2 reports um, for, our, for the time frame of August to December 2019 um, on, so sorry, she worked with me on correcting her contract um, to get the months off of her responsibility um, and we did that on, I'm sorry. <laughs> It was February 21st, and um, 
she has no prior violations. And that's it. Very good. Appreciate that. Uh, I don't have any questions of you. Um, uh, Ms. Gottlieb McHale, would you like to be heard? Um, yeah, I, I think I... Okay, um, well, if you would hold on for a moment. Well, our staff has been sworn in and we're required to do this. Um, so okay. if you would, uh, over the telephone line, raise your right hand and and do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will you give us today is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth thank you thank you so much uh, go right ahead um yeah as i stated in my uh, letter to you um i found out about the missing reports last friday um as i received communication from my former employer the american cancer society um and as soon as i could get off work i rushed home um i got on the phone with both customer service in the enforcement department um and as quickly as i could um uh, worked on uh, fixing the missing reports um i i work now as a researcher for a union i have a deep appreciation for the work that your commission does um and keeping folks accountable um and it was certainly um not my intention uh to uh to violate my my part in that and i am regretful of that um, but i also am asking um, that you would consider the fine of $250 um, in lieu of the fact that uh, I, I made um, as much of an effort as possible to um, fill in those reports as soon as I found out they were missing. Um, and in my capacity for the American Cancer Society during that time, I was covering for my director, which was a position that was not filled, and I wasn't really acting as a lobbyist during those ones. Um, which is reflected in the reports that I submitted. Thank you very much. I appreciate that that narrative. There's there's usually a story behind the story, and and uh, we certainly try to take that into account. Um, uh, staff, um, I had on my materials that staff was recommended. The recommended penalty was actually 150 and not 250. Is that correct? That is correct. For this pattern? She did correct and okay. file reports. Okay, and further staff is recommending that that also that the full amount be suspended. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and so uh, I am ready to, to make my ruling. Uh, in, in the uh, matter of PDC case um, 65098, I do find that the record uh, supports uh, a violation of RCW 4117A615 by Alma Gottlieb McHale uh, for fa failure to timely file the required reports for 2019 that were due by the 15th day of the month following the reportable activity. Uh, having found the violation, I am also taking into account the mitigating factors um, of, of not receiving the, the information uh, for the, her previous uh, employment uh, in, in a timely fashion. So I am, I am uh, suspending uh, the entire amount as well, $150 um, is what's but normally would be uh, assessed, um, and I am conditioning that on uh, uh, being in compliance with reporting requirements. I, I understand that she has um, uh, filed the, the missing report, um, and that um, she uh, agrees to commit no further violations uh, of Chapter 14 or 20. 4217A, excuse me, and Chapter 390 WAC for a period of four years uh, from the date of the order issued 
uh, should she do lobbying in the future. Um, is there anything else? A written order will memorializing today's oral ruling will be sent to you uh, within 10 days. Very good. That will be my decision. Perfect. Thank you, Alma. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Bye. Alrighty. Did, that, did I handle that correctly? Mm -hmm. I know it says 30, but we always say 10 in all other matters that the commission hand, the full commission handles. They say it could be 30, but our, our internal uh, goal is 10. Are you able to do that, or should I say 30? We'll do our best. Okay. Quickly, yeah. Cool. Um, so um, I was following, sort of following the script and sort of not. Does that sound okay to you? Yes. To you folks? Okay, I want to not leave out anything important. <laughs> uh, all righty. Well, um, we will then move to the next uh, case. Uh, involving Rosie Cullen, uh, case number 65085, and who will present that? I will, Tabitha Blacksmith. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Emmons. This is, as you stated, this is PDC case number 65085 against Rosie Cullen. Rosie is a lobbyist. Um, Rosie was not able to appear today by phone or in person, so she sent a written response. Would you like me to read it briefly into the record? Yes. Okay. Rosie asked us to submit this statement in her place at the hearing. She said, I would like to submit a request to waive the $100 fee. She's talking about the fee that is associated with the statement of understanding and accept her apologies for not filing the February 2019 L2 report on time. I have been working briefly as a lobbyist and was still getting familiar with all the rules and understanding of who was responsible to complete the different reports, but I was then let go from my position on February 5, 2019. I did not realize I would have still been listed as a lobbyist for that employer. From that point on, I did not receive any email communication from the PDC as I no longer had access to my work email and my former employer also never forwarded me any correspondence from the PDC. The first phone call I recall getting from the PDC regarding this matter was on February 14, 2020. I have since created a new online account, relinked to my lobbyist profile, updated the contact info, and have completed the L2 report for February 2019. I ask that you waive the fee and accept my explanation of the circumstances. Staff recommendation is for um, that the ordinary penalty would be $150 and suspension of 100 uh, is the recommendation. Could you explain that? Why, why not um, uh, suspend the entire amount? We put that down because she had only requested a hundred, but we are. I'm in favor of suspending the entire amount if you think it's appropriate. I do. I I will. I'm ready to um, to rule in this matter as well. Uh, having heard the evidence presented in this case, including the the letter of explanation, uh, I am. Uh, in the matter of this case, which is case 6508. Um, I do find that there was a violation of RCW 4217A615 by Rosie Cullen uh, for failing to fi timely file the required re L2 reports in uh, Fort 2019 that were due by the 15th day of the month uh, following the reportable activity. Uh, but taking into account the mitigating factors uh, that were presented in, in uh, communication with staff and in her letter of the, of the uh, job change and um, the uh, notice or the, the, the uh, knowledge of the requirement to be uh, submitting those reports for 2019 uh, did not 
did not follow her, so I am uh, suspending the the uh, $150 um, recommended penalty. Uh, I am. Um, she is currently in in compliance with the reporting requirements. She submitted the the missing report, right? Yes, she has. And. Um, uh, I also would add our usual and accustomed um, uh, notice when we send our the uh, the written order in this matter that uh, she agrees to commit no further violations of 4217A and Chapter 390 WAC for a period of four years from the date of the order issued. So um, this. A written order will be uh, sent to, um, to Ms. Collin uh, within 30 calendar days. Thank you. Thank you. I have on my on my calendar um, lobbyists with no prior violations who failed to report before hearing and failed to sign a uh, statement of understanding. There are, I guess, with Mr. Bizzone, uh taken off that there would be three in that cluster. That is correct, and I can present them as a batch if you like. Would you do that, please? Proceed. Certainly. These are PDC case number 65097, 65092, and 65087 against Armstrong and Associates, Mark Dunn, and Robert Mitchell, who are registered as lobbyists. Staff is alleging that Armstrong and Associates, Mark Dunn, and Robert Mitchell violated RCW 42.17A.615 by failing to file one or more monthly lobbying expense reports or L2 reports for 2019. The L2 reports were due no later than the 15th day of each calendar month, disclosing lobbying activity for the previous calendar month. None of the three individuals mentioned have any prior violations with the PDC, nor are they participating in the hearing by phone, in person, or in writing. Would you like the staff's recommendation? Yes, please. PDC staff is recommending the following penalties. For Armstrong and Associates, $250, which is the, um, for failing to file or timely file the L2 reports. This is the penalty in accordance with Washington Administrative Code 390-37-143 for a filer with no prior violation who failed to file the L2 report by the date of the hearing and we are not recommending a suspended amount. For Robert Mitchell we are also recommending a $250 penalty for a violation of RCW 42.17A.615 for failing to timely failing to file the L2 report with no recommended suspension. And Robert Mitchell, we we're also recommending a penalty of $250 for failure to file the L2 report by the date of the hearing and no prior violations and no suspended penalty is recommended. Thank you very much. Um, having considered uh, all of the the evidence presented in these three cases, I'm ready to make my ruling. Uh, in the matter of PDC case 65097, uh, Armstrong and Associates 65092, Mark Dunn, and 65087, Robert Mitchell. Uh, each of those uh, I do find uh, violated RCW 4217A615. 
by for failing to timely file the required L2 reports for 2019 that were due by the 15th day of the month following the reportable activity. Having found a violation in each case, I am assessing a penalty uh, in each case in the amount of uh, $250 in accordance with WAC 390. 37143, uh, the penalty schedule adopted by the Commission. Um, those uh, penalties uh, will be due and payable in, within 30 days. Um, a written order will be memorialized. Uh, that should be from the date of when the order is issued, uh, 30 days from that point and a written order will be uh, sent to each uh, each one uh, within 30 calendar days. Thank you. Commissioner Ammons, yes. would you like us to also include condition upon not uh, violating the law within the next four years in the order? Is that an ordinary uh, part of the order? Yes. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. No, no. Um, we can include language about future compliance, but generally that um, is a condition that's placed upon the suspension. If there's a, sp that's if there's a suspension, that's yeah, because otherwise we we could put that condition on them, but there would be nothing to, to back that condition on. My apologies. No problem. <laughs> no problem at all. Uh, okay. So, um, do we want to talk about, uh, for the record, uh, the cases that have been resolved uh, via under statement of understanding or administratively uh, at least list them? Absolutely. So the PDC through outreach was able to resolve a number of cases with the statement of understanding or administratively, and I will read those into the record. The following lobbyist uh, cases were resolved uh, via a statement of understanding. Alice Dietz, PDC case number 65082, and the affected report was for April of 19. Colleen Lang, PDC case number 65101, the affected reports were for February through December of 2019. Jacqueline True, PDC case number 65103, the affected reports were for May, July, and December of 2019. Principal Jeff Bissonnet, PDC case number 65096, and the reports that were affected were for the entire year. Principled Solutions, PDC case number 65090, and the reports were for all of 2019. Scott Blonian, PDC case number 65083, and the report that was filed was for February of 19 and Todd Milkey, PDC case number 65080, and the reports filed were for February through December of 2019. PDC, PDC staff were also able to administratively resolve the following lobbyist cases. Allison Holcomb, PDC case number 65088, the affected reports were for, for November and December of 2019. Andrea Piper Wentlin, PDC case number 65099, for December of 19. Jessica Hoff, PDC case number 65095 for December of 2019. Mario Brown, PDC case number 65093 for September of 2019. Robert Knoll, for PDC case number 65089 for November and December of 19. And Mark Okazaki, PDC case number 65091 for September of 2019. And if I may, uh, so with lobbyist cases specifically, we resolve cases administratively if we get word of illness or death or um, some sort of um, extenuating circumstance. Um, but also in the system, um, we pull a report that tells us which lobbyists said that they were supposed to be lobbying. Then they check these boxes for each month. And so if they weren't actually lobbying during that month, they can just go in and uncheck the box and then we close the case administratively because they didn't have a filing requirement for that month. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and also, just to clarify, as far as the order for the lobbyists, did you want us to put future compliance language in or not? 
No, I don't think so. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's presum presumably it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we hope <laughs> <Right>. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're not. We have nothing to hang over their heads. Um, um, okay. So uh, we will move now uh, into um, lobbyist employers, and we will have um, a single. Uh, case involving 7-Eleven and then we will have a group enforcement of uh, remaining lobbyist employers. So um, would you like to, to discuss um, lobbyist employers in the same fashion you did? Absolutely. Uh, so the second group of cases we will hear today involve employers of lobbyists who lobbied Washington State agencies and the legislature in calendar year 2018. Um, and as stated previously, we uncovered some new reports, um, so these numbers that I'll be presenting today are a little bit higher than um, what they might be. Um, but as of yesterday, these numbers were correct. Um, lobbyist employers are required uh, by RCW 4217A630 to file an annual lobbyist employer's expense report, also known as an L3 report, no later than the last day of February, disclosing lobbying activities in the previous calendar year. The employers coming before you failed to file their L3 reports, certifying financial activity in calendar year 2018, due no later than February 28, 2019. The L3 report discloses the names of employed lobbyists, along with their compensation, contributions and independent expenditures made, lobbying expenditures made, and other compensation paid for professional services to entities in which a state official or successful state candidate or a member of their immediate family holds an office, partnership, directorship, or ownership interest of 10% or more, the kind that's disclosed on the F1 report. Um, so, um, as of, uh, we sent a reminder to lobbyist employers on December 6, 2019, um, prior to their, um, prior to their deadline, and at that point, though it was before the deadline, only 30% had filed early. Um, as of the deadline, February 28th, 2019, um, and I'm sorry, that should be, I think, February 6th, that would make more sense. Um, so February 6th, we are at 30%. Um, between February 6th and February 28th, 2019, um, the compliance rate went up to 79%. Um, on January 5th, 2020, uh, PDC staff sent uh, 19 hearing, um, sorry, warning letters. Mm -hmm. um, on February, January 15th, 2020, PDC staff sent a warning letter by U.S. Mail to 206 lobbyist employers, which was an 85% compliance rate, who had failed to file their L3 reports, informing them of their past due reports, and providing a deadline of February 10th, 2020, to file their missing report to avoid enforcement or fines. Um, between the warning and hearing notice, PDC staff called lobbyist employers um, twice um, if they had saved reports, and once if they did not have saved reports, trying to get them to file before the hearing notice. On February 13th, 2020, PDC staff sent 46 hearing notices by U.S. mail and email, which was a 96.7% compliance rate, offering them an opportunity to sign a statement of understanding and pay a $100 penalty to avoid today's hearing. As of February 24th, 2020, only 10 lobbyist employers had still failed to file their L3 reports, which is a 99.7% compliance rate. Of those cases brought before you today, only 10 of 1,354 have failed to file their L3 reports, bringing us to a 0.7% non-compliance rate as the date of today's hearing. Very good. Appreciate their compliance and I appreciate staff uh, using such diligence to, to uh, prompt that compliance. Um, the the first case then that we'll handle individually is 711 Incorporated uh, case 64875. Who will present that, Tabitha? I will. Um, there's actually three others to move to that category okay. that just moved this morning. Okay. 
So we have Family Wineries of Washington okay. State, case number 64841. San Juan Sun Grown LLC, case number 64873. And Spectrum Health Systems, case number 64930, that will move into the um, no prior violations report filed, but no um, signed statement of understanding category. Uh, re repeat for me as, as a newcomer to the process, um, what moved them up into the, the earlier category? They have now filed their report. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, then we will handle those collectively then. Yes. Uh, would you proceed? Yes. Um, the aforementioned respondents filed the missing L3 reports. Um, but have not signed the statement of understanding. They do not have any prior violations and um, staff would recommend the, the penalty of $150 be entered for the um, untimely filing. And that is in accordance with WAC 390-37-143 for a filer with no prior violations who filed untimely the annual L3 report by the date of the hearing. Very good. And none of these uh, lobbyist employers wish to uh, appear or to make further communication with us about the hearing? That's correct. Thank you. Having considered the evidence presented in these cases, I'm ready to make my ruling um, in, in these cases. In, in, uh, the cases are 711 uh, Incorporated, uh, case 64875, Family Wineries of Washington State, 64841. San Juan Sun Grown LLC 64873 uh, and Spectrum Health Systems six, uh, 64930. Uh, I do find that the record supports a violation of RCW 4217A630 by those employers for failing to timely file the required L3 reports um, disclosing 28, is that 2019 or 20? 2018. 2018. Okay. Uh, activity that was due by February 28th, 2019. Having found a violation, I am assessing a penalty in the amount of $150 uh, in each case in accordance with WAC 390-37-143, the penalty schedule adopted by the Commission. Um, the penalty will be due and payable within 30 days uh, of receiving the order, which will be uh, sent uh, to them Within, uh, within 30 days. Um, I think that's all we need to, to complete that matter. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay, then um, the remainder of, of the list is lobbyist employers with no prior violations who failed to file a report before the hearing and fail to sign, uh, fail to sign a statement of understanding. Uh, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, six cases. That is correct. And are you presenting those as well? Yes. Okay. And did you want me to present them as a group? Yes, I do. Okay. Perfect. So the PDC cases. 64895 for Black Alliance of Thurston County, 64857 National Utility Contractors Association Washington Chapter, 
64863 pay quick 64867 for POS a bit Inc 64911 Washington for good policing and 64914 Zenefits um, they are all lobbyist employers with no prior violations staff is alleging that the respondents violated RCW 4217A 630 by failing to file the annual employer's lobbying expenses report, the L3 reports, for the year 2018. The L3 report discloses lobbying activity for calendar year 2018 and was due no later than February 28, 2019. Um, these respondents have all failed to file the missing reports by the day of the hearing. Would you like the staff re recommendation? Yes, please. Thank you. Staff recommend recommends that you find a violation of RCW 4217A 630 against the respondents listed for failing to file um, the L3 report and assess an appropriate penalty in accordance with WAC 390-37-143 for a filer with no prior violations who failed to file the L3 report by the date of the hearing. We are recommending $250 for that penalty. Thank you. Having heard uh, the evidence presented in these cases, I'm ready to make my ruling, uh, which will apply in each case that has been articulated. Uh, the cases um, are as presented, Black Alliance of Thurston County, 64895, National Utility Contractors Association, Washington oh, Chapter. Oh. Dave, I'm not sure why your mic just shut off. Hang on one moment. Oh, it's blathering away. Oh, I can hear me. Now it came back. It cut off. Yeah, it did. It cut off for a moment. Okay. Okay. Um, Utility contractors. <laughs> In, in case there was any uh, break in the recording, um, I am I am ruling in the matter of the cases that have just been presented. Uh, Black Alliance of Thurston County, 64895. National Utility Contractors Association, Washington Chapter, 64857. Pay Quick, 64863. Post Sabet Inc. 64867, Washington for Good Policing 64911. That's a good case number for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Zenefits um, 64914. Um, I I find that in each each of those matters, um, each of those cases presented that the record does support a violation of RCW 4217A 630 uh, for failing to find, timely file the required L3 form reports, uh, disclosing um, 2018 activity that was due by February 28, 2019. Uh, having found a violation I am concurring in the staff recommendation that uh, I assess a penalty in the amount of $250 in accordance with WAC 390-37-143, the penalty schedule adopted by the commission. Uh, the penalty will be due and payable within 30 days. Um, of receiving the order, which will be um, will be the written order will be sent to them within 30 calendar days. 
unless there are any other questions or comments. Uh, Chairman Adams, I just a point of clarification. Everyone who still owes a report that's due to the PDC within 30 days for lobbyists and employers? We'll put that in the order. Okay, thank you. Is there any other business to come before us today? Did you want to discuss the resolved cases for the employers? As yes, well? please. That's a good idea. Okay. So we did have um, lobbyist employers who were resolved um, by statement of understanding, and I'll read those for the record. We have Abbott Laboratories, case number 64934, Alan Stromberger, 64882, American Multi Cinema Inc., 64894, Construction Material Recycling Association Northwest Chapter, 64908, DB3, 64912, Emerald Enterprises LLC, 64920, Equal Rights Washington, 64921, EVGO Services LLC, 64840, Fair Start, 64843, Lifelong AIDS Alliance, 65458, Natural Extracts Inc, 64858, Nintendo of America, 64859, Talgo Inc, 64903, U.S. Anesthesia Partners, Inc., 64906, and Washington Asparagus Commission, 64907. We also have several lobbyist employers resolved administratively, and I'll read those into the record. I have Cadman, Inc., case number 64927, Evergreen State Taxi Association, 64834, Handy Technologies, Inc., 64845. Liberty Health Partners, 64852. Recreation Vehicle Industry Association, 64869. Rental Housing Association of Puget Sound, 64872. Sarah Janes, 65084. Snap Mobile, LLC. 64898 and Tabor 100 64901. Very good, thank you much. Um, are there, is there anything else to come before me today? No. Very good, then we will uh, stand adjourned. It is 10.25 a.m. <laughs> well done. Th thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. I was so efficient. That was pretty <laughs> soothing. <laughs>